Hello guys and welcome to Gas City Gaming set review for Amonkhet. Uh, in this video we're going to be taking a look at all the white cards. Uh, for the most part we're going to be taking a look at these cards in a limited context, so that's your drafts, pre-releases, that kind of thing, where you're just playing with the cards from Amonkhet, maybe some other sets too, but for the most part just Amonkhet seals and drafts. Um, if I think a card's good enough to make it into a constructed environment, um, you know, standard or even further back, I'll mention it, but for the most part, it's going to be limited cards. Uh, just to preface as well, I'm not a Grand Prix or Pro Tour champion or anything, just a guy who's been around this game for a few years now, uh, and wants to share his opinions on some of these cards and hear what you guys have to think as well. So let's get right to it with our first card is Angel of Sanctions. Angel of Sanctions is a three generic mana and two white for a creature. It is an angel. Uh, it's a mythic rare. It has flying and has when Angel of Sanction enters the battlefield, you may exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls with until Angel of Sanctions leaves the battlefield. It is a three four and has embalm for five generic mana and a white. We'll get to embalm in a second here. So let's talk about just the abilities on its face. So flying, solid. Three four flying for five. It's pretty good. Uh, it's just a pretty good rate on its own. Never mind the fact that when it enters the battlefield, it has an O-ring ability. So you get to exile non-land permanent. They're planeswalker. They're a big bomb creature. They're uh, an enchantment uh, removal that's on one of your creatures. Something like that. Um, you can get rid of any non-land permanent. So it's pretty good uh, just on the face of it. So what Embalm says just makes it that much better. So what Embalm does is five generic mana and a white that says exile this card from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a white zombie angel with no mana cost. Embalm only as a sorcery. Uh, so it comes back as an exact copy of Angel of Sanctions, except it's a zombie, uh, white zombie, in addition to its other colors and types. Um, so you basically get two copies of Angel of Sanctions. So what happens to these kinds of creatures? They're usually magnets for removal. Um, so you know, you drop this down, you O-ring their big creature, um, pass a turn, they remove this creature with some something that just has a destroy target creature, because it can die to that, you know, I don't like that dice doomblade test, almost everything does. Um, so they can kill it, but it, when they do, okay, they get their big creature back. Uh, on your turn, you embalm this, you get angel sanctions back again. Um, embalm, I when we've been talking about it locally here in Medicine Hat, um, I've been talking kind of like flashback on creatures, essentially is kind of the tone that's come up a lot with it. It's Angel of Sanctions is a 3-4 flying angel with an O-ring effect that has flashback for 6 mana. That seems pretty good, guys. Um, limited all the time, every time. Yes, obviously it's Mythic Rare. Very slow chance of pulling it, but if you do, just play it. Just play it. You're going to have a good time. Um, constructed? Uh, maybe. It's hard to say. Right now, as of the filming of this, um, the two decks dominating any kind of standard are the Sahili uh, Felidar Guardian combo and Mardu Vehicles. In my opinion, bans, this isn't good enough to go against those. Um, bans have to happen for, in order for this card to be playable. There's rumors that stuff from those decks are going to get banned. We'll see. Too hard to say right now uh, for sure, but well, you never know. Um, I hope this kind of card does see play. We just get a little more variation of standard, the better in my opinion. So hopefully we do get to see this card, uh, see a little play in standard with some bannings to happen. Uh, moving on to Anointed Procession. It's three generic mana and a white for a rare enchantment. It says, if an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many of those tokens instead. Now, let's go back to a second for Angel of Sanctions. Create a token. That's a copy of it. An effect would create a token. It creates twice that many. Two Angel of Sanctions seems good. Now, this is a case in which your rare isn't going to be good in everything. A rare creature usually is good just on its own. It's a rare creature usually is pretty splashy. Uh, rare enchantments like this, where you're doubling token production, aren't always if you have very little token production. Uh, like in your blue-white flyers deck, you might have a couple embalm cards that are creating those tokens, but not a ton, right? Um, in something like a black-white zombie deck, where you're creating, going to be creating a lot of tokens, um, this doubling those seems pretty good. If I have, I'm running a decent amount of embalm cards or cards that create zombie tokens or things like that, I would definitely run one of these if I pulled it in that kind of deck. Um, there are better effects than this 
uh, like when you go back to modern and stuff like that, in which tokens deck aren't exactly huge things. Um, standard again, I don't necessarily see and get them there, unfortunately. Um, barring some kind of bannings, if if we do get some bannings, I can see a white weenie deck coming, and that deck might create tokens. In which case, this is maybe a two of, but I think that deck plays a more aggressive curve than wanting to do this on your turn four. Um, so maybe, but leaning towards no if I had to pick something. Uh, Anointer Priest is a generic and a white mana. For a creature that is a human cleric, it is common and is a 1-3. Whenever a creature token enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life, and it has Embalm for three generic mana and a white. Um, so again, in your token deck, in limited, it's going to be good. Um, this is the kind of thing, I think, if you're drafting, maybe first pack when everybody's kind of trying to find their way it won't go super early, but the later in the draft you go, I think the earlier this will get picked. You know, if you open one's third pack and you're not the token deck, it's starting like it might get picked in that first five picks in the third pack. Uh, just to gain somebody some life. Uh, if you can get a couple of these in a draft in a black-white token deck, so you're going to be gaining a lot of life, I feel like. It's a 1-3, blocks 2-2 two, two zombie tokens all day. Um, just on its own, 1-3's have always been good at doing that. 1-3's with effects have seen play before, so I think this will as well. And despite, and if it dies, bring it back. And it gets you the exact same effect again. Uh, Approach of the Second Sun. I love this card. I love cards like this. Um, <laughs> I know, I'm not, when I say that, I'm not saying it's to be competitive at all. But I love cards like this. Uh, Approach of the Second Sun is 6 generic man and a white for a rare sorcery that says, If Approach of the Second Sun was cast from your hand, and you've cast another spell named Approach of the Second Sun this game, you win the game. Otherwise, put Approach of the Second Sun into its owner's library, 7th from the top, and you gain 7 life. Um, I really want this card to get there. Like, it doesn't have to dominate standard or anything, but I want this to make an appearance, at least. Um... We're getting a couple good counter, like just cancel. We'll just counter a spell. Um, and Essence Scatter in this set as well. Spoiler alert. Um, and we're getting a really good blue draw spell as well. It's instant speed X draw. So I want this to get there. Like we still have Torrential Gear Hulk. So if there's a really, really control deck, um, again, the current meta I think is a little too aggressive for that. Um, like, I could go off on turn four of Felidar Guardian long before you can cast the first copy of this, right? Um, or, you know, ag Mardu Vehicles is going to aggro out you out long before you cast the first copy of this. So, I can see it. I want to see it get there. At least a little bit, make a couple appearances and some top eights. But I, I want to see it get there because I love this kind of card. But I don't think it will. And again, this is the kind of thing where in limited, it's going to take too long. I don't want to play this in limited, unfortunately. Just not all rares are things that are going to be good in all environments. So, uh, Avon Mind Sensor, however, is. Uh, two generic mana and a white for a flying bird wizard creature at a rare, and he's a 2 1. He has flash as well. Uh, so, if an opponent would search a library, that player searches the top four cards of that library instead. So, if you haven't got to play with Avon Mind Sensor before, you're going to have some fun. Uh, limited, there's not a ton of search mechanics in Amonkhet Limited, but. 2-1 flash flyer for 3 is not bad. It's a white flyer. It's pretty good. Um, you know, we flash it on the end of their turn, whatever. If they do happen to, like, there's Evolving Wilds in this format, right? So they play Evolving Wilds, tap sack it, you flash in your even mind sensor. They get to look at the top four cards of their library instead of the whole deck. They don't have land in there, or maybe they have the wrong color of land. You know, that was kind of their fixing. They don't get to find it. You kind of just uh, hoop them. Not the nicest strategy in the world, but, you know, most pre-releases you're playing for packs, so... Can't always make friends. You can't make friends with Avon Mind Sensor. Um, I think it's going to see some standard play. Uh, again, like, because searching happens. Um, it just does. Obviously, it does see play in modern and stuff as well. So, this one, just Avon Mind Sensor is an awesome reprint. Just love the art on this one as well. I actually like this art more than, like, the original art, too. Just, it's so pretty. Uh, Binding Mummy is a generic and a white for a common creature zombie. It's a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever another zombie enters the battlefield under your control, you may tap target artifact or creature. Um, so note that this is a zombie uh, entering the battlefield. It's not casting uh, a zombie. 
So, you know, if you have something that creates zombie tokens, like there are black spells that do that, just create zombies when they enter, or make three zombies. We'll see those spells later. Um, you know, if you make three zombies, you get to tap three creatures. You make two zombies, you get to tap two creatures. You cast a couple zombie creatures, you get to tap creature. Um, obviously, if you're not heavy zombies, there's better two drops to play. Um, like if less than half of my creatures were zombies, I'd be a little nervous about including this in my deck. But in the right kind of deck, it would definitely, definitely go in there. So, uh, Binding Mummy in that Black Wide Zombie deck, that is going to be a thing in this limited. Um, definitely throw a copy, maybe even two in there if you're really, really heavy zombies, if you get enough pulls. So, or able to draft it. Cartouche of Solidarity. Love me some cartouches. Cartouche of Solidarity is one white mana for a enchantment that is an aura cartouche. New, uh, new enchantment type. It's cartouche. It is common, as are all the cartouches. Enchant creature you control. When Cartouche of Solidary enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 white warrior creature token with Vigilance. Uh, Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has first strike. Uh, so this, I really like this. Uh, making one of your early drops bigger and tougher and have first strike is huge. Um, making it better on defense, on offense, making it really difficult to block. Uh, plus getting a second body and a second body with Vigilance is really, really big for one mana. Um, Cartouche of Solidarity uh, is one of the better Cartouches. There's five. None of them are horrible. Like, if you're in the colors for them, I would probably play at least one of them all. Uh, barring unless you get a, some really good pulls or draft really, really well, uh, I would play at least one. You know, if you're, you know, green-red, I would play one green one and one red one. Uh, well, green one's actually really good. If I get a couple green ones, I would play a couple green ones instead. But... You know what I'm trying to say. They're all decent enough cards to be played, including Cartouche Solidarity. Um, draft it, use it in your pre-release decks, you're going to have a good time. Cast Out is three generic mana and a white for an uncommon enchantment with Flash that says when Cast Out enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Cast Out leaves the battlefield and it cycles for a white. You're almost never going to cycle this. If you find yourself cycling this, something's already gone wrong. Um... Three generic mana and a white, it's uh, an Oblivion Ring effect, you know, exile something until it leaves. Um, with Flash, we saw this card in, I believe it was Battle for Zendikar, uh, but it was generic white-white instead. Uh, because this has cycling, uh, it's one more mana, but less color-specific. Um, basically because it has cycling, otherwise it would be almost a direct reprint, you know, they just make it colorless white-white again. But because it has cycling, we do see that a little bit with some of the cards with Embalm or some of the cards with cycling, they're a little bit more expensive because they're more versatile. Um, again, if you're cycling this one, something's gone wrong already, so either something's gone wrong really wrong or something's gone very right and you're winning so much you can afford to cycle your removal. So, you know, at either point, you're probably just going to play your cast out I would play uh, as many of these as I could. If you're in white, this is your removal. So I would play your cast outs, and I would have fun with your cast outs. Uh, Compulsory Arrest, almost as good, not quite as good. It's generic in white. Uh, for a common enchantment aura, well, it's not quite almost as good even. Uh, it says enchant creature, <laughs> enchanted creature can't attack or block. And keep in mind, its activated abilities can still be activated. So if it you know, has a tap ability to add mana, or if it's like one of the gods with their activated abilities, like we'll see with Oketra here in a few cards, um, those abilities can still be used. So keep that in mind if you're using this. Uh, enchanted creature has two generic mana. Sacrifice this creature, you gain two life. So if they have something like Bontu's trigger where something has to die for him to attack or block, they can use the compulsory rest trigger because it gives their creature the ability they can pay they can use that ability um compulsory rest is good um except for, for removing like a big vanilla creature if you remove like their big vanilla five five trample that's where this is good it's good when you're using young creatures with activated abilities um but not as good like if you use it on one of the gods it's good because the gods are all big beefy creatures as well but you're not removing the gods abilities which we'll see later can be really impressive as well. So Compulsory Rest is still good. I would still play it because, again, this is the kind, this is pacifism. This is the, not a, well, almost pacifism. But this is the kind of removal you get in white. Because our last cast out is uncommon. You're not going to get nearly as many of it when you're drafting or in your sealed pools. Uh, but Compulsory Rest is common, so this is the kind of thing you're going to get more of. And I would be happy. I'd be fine with playing this as well. Uh, Devoted Crop Mate is two generic mana and a white for a 3-2. It says you may exert, first 
chance of exert. Devoted crop mate as it attacks. When you do, return target creature card with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. What exert does, what exert does in brackets here, an exerted creature won't untap during your uh, next untap step. Um, so it's the opposite of vigilance, essentially. So I'm on my turn. I'm declaring my attackers. You know, okay, devoted crop mate's going to attack, and he's going to exert. You have to declare it as one. Uh, you can't say, okay, I'm going to declare all my attackers. Uh, okay, you're going to move to blocks. Okay, Devoted Crop Mage is going to attack. You have to do it on your declare attacker step. That's when you have to say if he's going to exert or not. Uh, you can't let your opponent declare the blocks and then choose to exert. You have to put it, it's on you, right? you got to do this. If you miss it, you miss it because it's a May. If you forget to exert, you forget to exert, right? That's on you. Uh, it's part of our maintaining that game stage, you know, go into this with the be aware of all the things. So these new mechanics, we got to learn how to use them properly. Um, exert is really cool. I, I like it. You know, getting some of the exert uh, mechanics are really good. We'll see a bunch, obviously, when we go through the rest of the cards. Hopefully you stick with us. Um, but there's some really good ones. This one can be good. 3-2 three, for 3 is fine. Uh, I've played those before. And it's good. You know, this guy is a little bit more for your aggressive decks. Uh, you know, if your early creatures uh, draw removal, or if they, you know, just get blocked and die, this guy helps you get them back. Um, there are ways, so if you do exert something, all it says is it doesn't untap during your next untap step. We will see some cards that untap our things for us, uh, or if something with Vigilance, if you give something Vigilance somehow, um, you can exert it without having to tap it. You can say, okay, this creature the Vigilance is going to exert, it doesn't, it doesn't tap when they attack, right? They have Vigilance, so you don't have to worry about them not untapping during your next untap step. So, uh, Vigilance, Exert combo could be pretty good. Devoted Crop Mate, um, if you're playing that aggressive white deck, I'd be fine with it. Not necessarily the kind of thing you want to put in, like, your dirtily, you know, maybe blue-white deck, or more, like, zombie-centric blue... Uh, sorry, white-black white, -blue, white -black deck. But in your, like, white-red aggressive decks, this is something I could see doing for sure. Uh, Jeru's Resolve, that's how I'm choosing to pronounce this. Uh, De Jeru's seems wrong, so I'm just going with Jeru's. Jeru's Resolve is one white, just like we were talking about. Uh, instant for co and instant at common. Uh, untap target creature, prevent all damage that we dealt to it this turn, and it cycles for two. Um, in our Exert decks, I love this card for a couple reasons. Uh, so we Exert our card, we get our Exert effect, which is usually pretty good, can be really good. Um, the our opponent's like, okay, and they're, I'm going to take that three, four, five, whatever, um, but they're going to be open next turn, I'm going to get them. You Jero's Resolve, you get to do two things. You get to untap that creature. Hopefully it's a good enough creature to kill one of theirs that you're attack they're attacking you with. Uh, prevents all combat damage that will be dealt to your creature. The damage from your creature to theirs still happens. Hopefully their creature dies, and you get a swing in next turn and get that exerted effect again two turns in a row. Um, and worse comes to worse, you get to cycle this card and draw a card. For one white mana or two generic, I am loving this card in your exert decks. Really, really good. Even just, you can even argue playing this in like the dirtily black white decks because it kind of fogs for a turn. Um, you know, they're attacking in with a really big board, uh, maybe with like some four threes, four twos, stuff like that, where the toughness is lower, um, but the power is higher, so you want to block their four two with your two four, you're good. And it just, it's a, kind of a removal spell or draws you a card and replaces itself. It's just, that's how I see these kinds of things. This is a combat trick that you're going to use to kill one of their creatures and keep yours around. It's going to be a one for one to kill their creature, keep something in your hand, and worst case scenario, you draw a card, drawing a card is the best thing you can do in Magic. So, really like Jerry's Resolve. I'd be fine playing um, one of these in a white deck in general. Uh, if you have a lot of exert, even playing more than one for sure. Fan Bear is, this is your perfect white dirtle deck card. Um, it's one white mana for a 1-2 for a zombie creature at common, so if you're playing your zombie deck, sets off all those triggers. It has pay 2 generic mana and tap it to tap target creature. So this is another kind of white removal. White usually gets these tappers, right? Um, you can pay 2 mana a turn, and you set fan bearer aside, you set 2 mana aside, you're like, you know what? Your 5-5 five five is never coming at me, bro. You know, you gotta just, okay, this is, yep, nope, beginning in combat on your turn. Okay, before you declare attacks, tap your creature. Okay, tap, tap your creature. T tap it. You no, know, you stay tapped. And you can just do that for as long as you control Fan Bearer and have two mana. You can keep their biggest creature locked down, um, which I'm happy with. Um, I really like this kind of effect. It's been proven to be powerful before. Uh, I'm happy playing a couple of these guys as well. 
low toughness, can die. There's gonna a lot of gonna be a lot of minus one minus one counters running around, but you just run that risk. Um, hopefully, you have bigger threats that they want to take care of first before they want to kill your fan bear, uh, because this is taking care of their creature, right? If they're smart, they'll probably kill your fan bear so they can attack with their big old stompy thing, right? But fan bear, I'm more than fine playing. Playing one of these is it's a solid one drop in most white decks. Uh, maybe not where you want to be on your aggressive stuff, but uh, in your Dirtle deck, I'm loving even more than one copy of it, so good old fan bear. Forsake the Worldly is two generic man and a white for a common instant that says exile target artifact or enchantment and cycles for two. I'll note on cycling um, that I don't think I've mentioned yet. You can cycle at instant speed, so, you know, it's late game, you're at the end of their turn, you know, they haven't played an enchantment yet, for example, with this guy. Um, you know, I'm going to cycle this draw card. That's fine. Like, in white especially, there's not a ton of draw in white. So cycling some stuff in white could be pretty good for you. Um, however, that being said, in this format, the cartouches are all enchantments. The trials are all enchantments. Um, and if you're playing against a lot of decks, like green, the green cartouches are excellent. Um, red is good. The red trial is okay. Um, blue's enchantment, uh, sorry, blue's removal is going to be a lot of enchantments. Uh, you know, like enchant creature, tap it, stays tapped. Um, white's removal is a lot of enchantment based the black cart trial is very good uh, the black cartouches are going to be played as well it's good enough so I think there's going to be enough enchantments running around that you can arguably main deck one of these and be fine with it um, even if they're only playing a couple of enchantments it only has a couple of targets if you don't see one in a game you get a cyclist and draw card um, you can sideboard in it is common so you, if you do get more than one I could pause and they do have a lot of enchantments si uh, coming in like the green um Cartouche is really good. Uh, if I am in green, I'm going to play that guy. You'll see him in another video. Um, I would play a Hussey even sideboard in more than one copy if you get him. Uh, but like I said, Forsake the Worldly in limited, just fine playing a copy in... If I'm playing white, there's going to be a copy in my main deck for sure. Gideon of the Trials is going to be in my main deck for sure if I get him. Uh, generic mana and two white for a Planeswalker Gideon. It's mythic. Comes in with three loyalty. Has no minus ability. Uh, it's a plus one. Uh, for until your next turn, prevent all damage target permanent would uh, deal. So, you know, they have a creature on their side, you gotta put it in a bubble. I believe this was uh, Kiora's ability, kind of put something in a bubble. Uh, you don't target your own creature, it doesn't say prevent all damage that, you know, would be dealt to this. It says prevent all damage it would do. So you want to target their creature with that. Um, say, you know, that thing is wearing kid gloves for a turn and can't touch Gideon. Uh, this is middle zero. It says, until end of turn, Gideon does his Gideon thing. Uh, Gideon of the Trials becomes a 4-4 human soldier creature with indestructible uh, that's still a planeswalker. Prevent all damage that will be dealt to him this turn. So he does this thing where he turns into a creature and stomps in. Uh, his, third, his second zero, his third ability, says, this is the interesting one you've probably heard about by now. You get an emblem with, as long as you control a Gideon planeswalker, you can't lose the game and your opponent can't win the game. So every copy of Gideon... Uh, becomes a Platinum Angel that essentially had that effect. But there's not as much near as much Planeswalker removal as there is creature removal, right? Um, they're coming up in Standard. So I'm going to start talking about in Standard just for drafts, for seals, all that. Play this card. If you get one, do your best to play it, right? Double white, so it's, you can't, it's harder to splash, but play this card. Um, continuing to Standard, if... There are going to be three different Gideons, provided there are no bans coming up. Um, there are going to be three different Gideons legal and standard, because there's Gideon Trials, uh, Ally of Zendikar, and there's the one from the Planeswalker intro deck as well, which are legal and standard, um, which I'd be fine playing. They're okay, because this guy comes in at three, Ally of Zendikar comes in at four, that one comes in at five. Um, and just to have 12 Platinum Angels in your deck. Turn three, play this guy zero. Okay. They're going to attack him because they want to die because they want you to be able to lose. Turn four, ally Zendikar. Play him, make a knight. Block. You know, and you have... So you're down to, okay, 11 Platinum Angels in your deck. As long as you control a Gideon, you can't lose the game. And your opponent can't win. Um, for that reason, I really hope ally Zendikar gets banned. Um, but even if that ban does happen, um, I don't want to say too much about that because I want these based on these cards but 
even if that does happen, I think Gideon the Trials here is going to see play, plenty of play, because in a, in a white weenie deck, putting a Gideon in it has always been a good thing. This is a Planeswalker with other abilities and also turns into a good creature, aside from the fact that he's Platinum Angel now. So Gideon the Trials, play him, pick him, just yes. Just yes. Gideon the Trials, yes. Uh, Gideon's Intervention. Is too generic and too white for a rare enchantment. It says, as Gideon's intervention enters the battlefield, choose a card name. Your opponents can't cast spells with the chosen name. Prevent all damage that will be dealt to you and permanence you control by sources with the chosen name. Um, this is a kind of rare I would not main deck in my limited. It sounds really good. Uh, if you're new to a draft, if you're new to sealed or magic general, it sounds really good. Like, this is amazing. They, I prevent them from playing a spell. If you don't know what they're playing when you play this card, you can't name anything. Um, so outside of constructs, like in your draft or anything, unless you build your deck right beside a guy and you play against him, and you're like, oh, cool, you got that really good bomb rare. Yeah, that's awesome, awesome creature, right? Unless you know that and you play against somebody, you don't know what to name that first game. So this is definitely a really, really good sideboard card. Um, for sure, really, really good. But not as good of a main deck card because you don't know what to name that first game. Definitely in almost any matchup, this would come in in your second game. I, like, I would. Anyway. Um, constructed, can possibly getting there. Um, you know, if I can prevent an opponent from casting Felidar Guardian, or from casting Sahili, or from casting a Gideon Ally Zendikar, I can see a copy or two being in sideboards in Constructed. But both decks can happen so fast right now that it might be hard, again, without bans. But I can see a copy or two hitting sideboards in, uh, in Constructed play. Uh, Glorybound Initiate is generic in a white, is a creature, human, warrior, rare, it's a 3-1. And it says, you may exert Glorybound Initiate as it attacks. When you do, it gets plus 1, plus 3, and gains lifelink until end of turn. So Glorybound Initiate here turns into a 4-4 four, four lifelink on turn 3. Attacking on turn 3 seems good. Um, now, I, said, I was talking earlier about a possible white weenie deck. First of all, limited, yes, just, yep, good, good. Like I said, there's a lot of minus 1, minus 1 counters moving around on this guy, but even if you get a chunk or two in there with him, you gain four or eight life, maybe did four damage to your opponent or killed one of their creatures, one of those things. So, yes. Um, I talked about a possible white weenie deck running around in standard. This guy's going to be a part of that because you play this turn two, you play always watching on turn three, it gives all your creatures, or sorry, non-token creatures, plus one, plus one in vigilance. So you can exert this guy every turn, uh, turn him from a with... Uh, always watching, he would be a 4-2, turn from a 4-2 into a 5-5 five, five lifelink vigilance, because uh, you're going to exert him every turn because he has vigilance, so it doesn't have to tap, so just keep exerting. Uh, attacking on turn 3. Seems good to me. Again, not the best magic player in the world, but seems good. Gust Walker is a generic man and a white for a 2-2 two, two that is a creature human wizard for an at common. Uh, you may exert Gust Walker as it attacks. When you do, it gets a plus one, plus one, and gains flying until end of turn. Uh, your aggressive white decks are going to love this guy. Maybe even your blue-white flyer decks as well. Um, your dirtle decks, maybe not as much. It's a good aggressive creature, so if you're a little lacking in your two drops, put him in there. Um, but it's a bear on defense. I personally want this guy attacking in the air for three as much as I can get him. Hit him, you know, playing against somebody else. Hit for six, maybe? Uh, hopefully. All right, uh, definitely for a common creature, this is definitely a good removal target for your opponent. It draws it off of you know your rare or something that you're going to play in a couple turns. So I would I would definitely be glad to pay in playing this guy uh, at least one copy in most white decks, maybe even two in the right ones if you do get him because he is a common right. Uh, impeccable timing, uh, reprint from Kaladesh. It's a generic mana and a white for an instant common. It says impeccable timing deals three damage target attacking or blocking creature. Just really good combat trick. Uh, that's going to be removal. You know, you can attack. With, that's lets you attack with uh, your smaller things uh, from your white deck, your little two twos, two threes, three twos, into their bigger stuff. Then they block. You do three damage to it. Or if the opposite happens as well, they attack with their five five six six into your board of two twos and three threes. You block and do three damage to it. Kills their big thing, right? That's what this card is for. Um, or for you know, in some of the red uh, red cards that we'll see, there's a lot of. Red in general, usually the uh, power is higher than the toughness, so those lower toughness but higher power creatures 
uh, start attacking earlier in the game than you normally expect them, because red, uh, you can bolt them, essentially, when they're attacking, and hopefully kill them without having to even block and put your creatures at risk, so... Impeccable timing. I've played two of these in limited decks before, and will be really happy to in the future as well in Amonkhet. Uh, in Oketra's name, I do like this card. Uh, it's generic mana and a white for a common instant. Uh, it says, Zombies you control get plus two plus one until end of turn, and other creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. And I know what that doesn't. They don't get plus two plus one and plus one plus one together. They get either or, depending if they're a zombie or not. Um, so remember, all your embalmed creatures come back as zombies. So this, um, plus there are just white zombies. All your mummy-esque type cards aren't creature type mummy, they're creature type zombie. Um, so obvious include in your black-white zombie decks, obvious as obvious. Um, I'd even be okay doing it uh, in other white decks because in a lot of white decks in limited, at least for myself, I've usually gone wide rather than going tall with the white decks. You know, you usually have a couple of flyers that will go in uh, but as we'll see, you can get flyers, well, we've already seen um, flyers with Embalm. So I can give them plus two, plus one, uh, and my other non-zombie flyer, plus one, plus one. That's an extra three damage. You know, say I'm already swinging over for five or six, that turns an eight or nine uh, for two mana. Seems good. Plus, you know, makes the rest of combat. Maybe another creature or two of mine survives on the ground. A couple more of theirs die because mine got pumped, and I like this card. This is the kind of card I use to see this as... Uh, part removal, part pump. You know, part damage to their face, part gonna kill their creatures, and maybe some of mine will live as well. That's how I tend to use these kinds of cards or see them when I'm building my deck, my draft deck, or my um, pre-release deck as well. It's how I tend to see these cards as, you know, six one, half a dozen of the other. Um, so in a catcher's name, if you can't already tell, I'm a pretty big fan of. Um, in a generic white deck, I would be very glad playing one. If I have a really zombie-centric deck, I would play multiples, two of for sure. Uh, in really zombie-centric decks. Uh, Mighty Leap, good old Mighty Leap, been reprinted a number of times, generic, and a white for an instant common. It says target creature gets plus two, plus two, gains flying to land a turn. Um, solid, I would include one. Always been a solid combat trick, and will continue to be. If you're playing um, green-white, for example, uh, you know, this gets your big 7-7 seven, seven, or 5-5 five, five, jumping over their wall ground blockers to hit him in the face for that last bit. Uh, Mighty Leap has been good in limited, limited <laughs> pre-release, kind of things, and like draft and pre-release decks, so I'd be fine with including another one uh, going forward as well. Oketra's Attendant is three generic mana and two white for a creature, bird, soldier. It's a uncommon. It has flying, as most birds tend to do. It cycles for two generic mana, and has embalm for its original casting cost. Three generic mana and two white, and it is a 3-3. Three, three. Um, this is the kind of thing I dream about when I play in Oketra's name. Um, Oketra's Attendant, on its own, Flies over for three, awesome. For five, fine with that. Um, comes back as a zombie. You know, like I said earlier, Embalm I just love because it feels like I have flashback on my creatures. Like, okay, my 3-3 three, three blocks, there's a blue drake that's a 4-3, I believe. Blocks that, okay, you know what? Mine gets to come back, yours doesn't. That seems good, <laughs> right? I don't know, if that I'm, I don't think I'm wrong. That seems real good. Um, what I am particularly excited about this as well is that it cycles. This is one of the very few cards, maybe the only card, that has both Embalm and Cycling. So you can, you know, you're not quite at five mana yet, you have nothing to do on, say you're on turn four, you played a two drop, you can cycle this, and then on your turn five, play it for it as Embalm. You're not getting as much value about, out of it, but maybe you didn't have your fifth land, you drew it, okay, play my fifth land, and, you know, I'm gonna Embalm my Catcher's Attendant, gonna get my 3-3 three, three Flyer anyway, that I just drew, right? From that I, or the land I just drew off of Cycling it. That's why this seems really good. It can fuel its own embalm. It can, yeah. I'm a fan of Oketra's Attendant. It's an uncommon, so you're not going to see as many. But if I got two, I'd play both. I'd play both very, very easily. Uh, Oketra the True uh, is a three generic mana, white, legendary creature, god. Uh, it's a mythic. Uh, it's a 3 6 with double strike, indestructible, and says Oketra the True can't attack or block unless you control at least three other creatures. Um, so all the gods have some kind of claws like that, that enables them uh, to attack or block, right? In this case, you need to control three other creatures, and they all fuel their own uh, claws as well. So in this case, Oketra has three generic mana and a white to create a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token with vigilance. Um, on board uh, token creation like this that you can just infinitely do as much as you have mana for uh, has always been really good. Uh, I think it was Shadows over Innistrad 
pre-release. I uh, my promo was not great as a, a man card uh, as a you know standard card or anything. It was Drog Skull Captain. Basically, I could pay and make I think it was four as well and make a flying spirit. Now flying better than one one with vigilance, but still you just get bodies right and eventually you're gonna overwhelm because um, you can do that on the end of their turn on your turn whatever and if you create a couple hopefully you already have a couple creatures out uh, Oketra can start attacking as a 3-6 double strike right that is just really really good <laughs> um, obviously limited pick it play it you're gonna have fun you can even splash it because it only costs one white um, so if you didn't if your white pool wasn't very good you can even splash this because it just it costs one white. Its ability only costs one white. You could put a, you know, three planes in your deck and play Oketra the True. Seems good. Um, constructed, if that white weenie deck happens, this could be kind of that topper uh, because it creates its own army of weenies. Uh, and there are other cards. Um, it's all these Lieutenant. Uh, and there's another one, the flip card from Shadows of Innistrad. I can't remember the name of right now. Might be the Lieutenant. Uh, no, different card. But anyway, um, that you know, want weenies to help them, and then they help the weenies. This just becomes really good. Uh, not only that, but it's a big body to go against if your opponent plays those bigger creatures in standard or something like that, right? 3-6 standard, or 3-6 double strike indestructible. You know, lives through board wipes, lives through anything but minus one, minus one counters, really, or exile. So, uh, Catch the True is a really good card. Pick it, play it, you'll have tons of fun. Uh, protection of the Hecma is four generic mana and a white for a uncommon enchantment. It says if a source of an opponent controls would deal damage to prevent one of that damage. Now sounds really good. Off the bat, if you're not as familiar with magic, if you're newer, um, sounds awesome. It's like I prevent one damage of everything, like all these creatures. Hard part is if they're attacking with a three three and a four four, you still take five. So prevent two, but you still take five. For me, uh, something needs to give me you know five to seven, maybe six to eight life. And that'll buy me a turn, right? I mean, if it prevents two or three damage, that's usually not enough to buy me a turn to let me draw another card to try and fight my way out of things. Uh, protection of the Hecma uh, on turn five, I would rather play, you know, Oketra's Attendant, a really good creature that lets me block for a couple turns, uh, maybe kill one or two of their creatures with those blockers, um, rather than play this. I would rather play Oketra's Attendant kind of thing. Both on commons. Right? I'm not like I'm asking for the world. But Protection of the Hecma, I can see as a sideboard for limited, a limited sideboard card, if you do see a big token deck running around. Like, obviously, preventing one damage from each source turns off all those 1 1 warrior soldiers that Oketra's going to make. Um, so it has its uses, but is like a one of that you might use in your sideboard in your draft or in your uh, pre release or sealed event. Uh, Regal Caracol uh, is a really good rare creature. Again, limited. I don't think it's going to pass that, but it's three generic mana and two white for a creature that's a cat. It's a rare for a 3-3. Three, three. It says, other cats you control get plus one, plus one, and have lifelink. Okay, but where are my other cats? Wait. Uh, when Regal Caracol enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one white, cra white cat creature tokens with lifelink. Um, so there you go. This on the board uh, creates you seven power, four of which have lifelink across three bodies. Uh, that's pretty good. Um, I feel like her and, or it, I, I can't see down there, I can't decide. I feel like Regal Caracol and Brimaz are going to be real good friends in some commander decks, right? Um, but this uh, Regal Caracol, I'd be very glad playing as a 5-drop. A lot of power spread across a lot of bodies, and that gains you life. So, uh, yeah, Constructed, not quite going to get there, but Limited Decks, a little more harder to play, like you'd have to be white, good committed to white because it's double white cost, but I really like uh, the Caracol. Renewed Faith, two generic mana and a white for an in uncommon instant says you gain six life, or uh, you can also cycle it for a generic and a white. Uh, when you cycle Renewed Faith, you may gain two life. So I like this because, like I said, this is right in my butter zone for buying me a turn. It gains six life. I, like I said, five to seven or six to eight usually gain gives you a turn. Um, or, you know, if you don't need to gain the life, uh, but you need some cards, maybe it's earlier game, you need to draw land, or you've drawn too many land, you want to draw a creature, um, you can cycle it for two mana at the end of your opponent's turn to draw a card and gain two life. Pay two mana to draw a card and gain two life. That's the best white is going to get nowadays, uh, for especially for draw and a little bit of life. You know, maybe they hit you with their one, two a couple times. Gives you that back. Gives you a couple turns back early game. But um, Renewed Faith, I'd definitely be glad uh, play, playing a copy in my limited deck. For sure, for sure. 
Uh, Retcrop Spearmaster is a two generic man and a white for a common creature human warrior. It's a three one and says you may exert Retcrop Spearmaster as it attacks. When you do, it gets plus one plus oh and gains first strike until end of turn. Now this guy is pretty vulnerable to the minus one minus one counters, obviously, only one toughness, but this is the kind of card your uh, red white aggro decks want to play. You know, it attacks and it'll either do four or it's going to kill something of theirs. Right, unless they get something re with a real big booty, real big butt out there with like the ancient crab that we'll see in the blue set review. Um, so in those kinds of decks, yes, again in your dural decks that aren't attacking, turning sideways every turn, I wouldn't necessarily want to do this though. So it has its uses in limited in uh, limited environments, but I think that's where it's staying. Sacred Cat uh, is one white mana for a creature. It's a cat, common, has lifelink. It's a one one, has embalm for a white as well. Uh, now again. I know there are a lot of there's gonna be a lot of minus one minus one counters moving around. Believe me, um, especially if we're playing against a black green deck. Wait till you see that. Um, but I do like Sacred Cat as a one drop because it's essentially two one drops on one card. Um, like I said, creatures with flashback. This is literally that. Especially if you do get some cards that pump your zombies, uh, like Enchantment Sist or the Zombie Lord that we'll see in our multicolored review. You pump all zombies because remember when you embalm this, it's a zombie cat. Zombie cat. Zam cat, eh, okay. didn't work. But <laughs> um, one one life link is fine. It'll block something and gain you life. So essentially, it probably at least a two life swing, if not more. And then at any point later in the game, you know what? I need a chump blocker. Bam! You have your sacred cat zombie, sacred zombie cat life link token. Right? Uh, you get another another token, which I'm pretty happy about. So I would play uh, a copy of sacred cat if my one drops are a little weak um, or creatures are a little weak in general. I might play two. Uh, but I do, I do like Sacred Cat. It has deuces. Seraph of the Suns is five generic mana and two white for an uncommon creature that is an angel. It's a four four. Has flying and indestructible. Um, now this is gonna because it's indestructible. It's gonna block all day. Um, you know, if you're playing against like the blue white flyers deck or they play a, the flying demon or something like that, this is gonna block all day. Um, Having said, there are minus one, minus one counters. There's going to be a lot running around. Wait till you see. There's going to be a lot of those running around on your tables. So this can get shrunk. Because it is four toughness, it's going to take a couple of turns of those counters out till it wants to die. It might stick around as a 3 3 2 2 1 1. Uh, so at which point it just becomes kind of a flying wall because it's indestructible. So, But this is going to be your curve topper. Like, this is your seven drop. You might not even make it here. Remember that. So um, this is going to be like you're playing one of these. I'm drafting one of these. I'm not playing two. Um, but really good, really good creature. I would definitely play at least, uh, oh, sorry, I would definitely play one if you get it, just because I don't want multiple seven drops in my deck or multiple really expensive creatures in my deck. But Seraph of the Suns, good card. You're going to be happy if you play one because it's just going to end a lot of games or really help you stabilize the board. Sparring Mummy is three generic mana and a white uh, for a 3 3 creature zombie at common. Uh, when Sparring Mummy enters the battlefield, untap target creature. Uh, now, if you're playing a lot of uh, Exert, this is a really good way to untap that creature and get uh, another body on the board. So right, now, I like the, um, especially in this art, how they're doing the zombies, or sorry, how they're doing the mummy zombies, zombies, mombies, something like that. Uh, <laughs> so they're doing them as like, this guy looks fast, right? You know, he's sparring with somebody, so he has to be fast, quick zombie. It's not just the shambling, you know. Um, so I like that. That they're kind of sticking to that, not just making them the feeble old, you know, Walking Dead style zombies, right? Um, on its own, if you're not playing a lot of Exert, I'd be a little shy about doing this, like playing paying four mana for my three three. I'm not always happy about doing that. If, so because it is a common, it might be one of your late cuts or your late includes, which I'd be okay with. It untaps your Exert creatures, gives something pseudo vigilance, right? But it's not the best. So it has its niches, like in your Exert decks. Maybe in your zombie decks, if you're really stretching to include like as many zombies as you can, but that's that's where it's sticking around. Just on its own, is not great. Uh, Supply Caravan is four generic mana and a white for a common uh, creature. It's a camel, and says when Supply Caravan enters the battlefield, if you control a tapped creature, create a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token vigilance, and it's a 3-5 on its own. Um, three fives for fives, for f three fives, four five. We've played with those before. I've been happy. This is your kind of white creature that stabilizes your ground a lot against your opponent's three threes, for example. Um, not only that, but it comes in usually with its with a buddy, right? With a one one vigilance. Those vigilance warriors are going to do some work in Amiket Limited, 
believe me, especially the fact that they have Vigilance, they're going to be awesome. Supply Caravan, I'd be fine with playing this as a 5-drop. There are better 5-drops out there, don't get me wrong, but for every for a 3-3 three, three Flyer 5-drop, I also want to play a 3-5 Ground guy uh, because it's going to help you block. This guy is going to be your blocker while your 3-3 three, three in the air attacks. Right, That's this guy's job, and the Flyer has its job. And this guy does his job pretty well. Top Crop Elite is 3 generic mana and a white. For a common creature, it's a bird warrior. has flying, and it says you may exert Taw Crop Elite as it attacks. When you do creatures you control, get plus one, plus one until end of turn. This is a common. What that means is in drafts, you're going to get more than one. If you're going after them, you're going to get more than one. Um, because of that, you can exert every turn. If you have two of these on the board, you leave one back, you attack with one and exert or I mean if you have overwhelming board presence you obviously attack with both exert both everything gets plus two plus two and you probably win but what you could do if you just want to have kind of a constant onslaught like if you have a couple of these in Oketra for example um, you know I okay create a token create two tokens whatever you gotta do attack with one of these exert you know and attack with some one ones or whatever creatures I got they all get plus one plus one okay that one's exerted it can't untap okay I attack on my next turn attack with second one exert it yeah, they're both tapped. Then this first one untaps. And they can just keep rotating like that. One untapping, one tapping. Because you exert them, on, exert them on alternate turns. And you just constantly get that pump to all your attacking creatures. Right? So, uh, Talk Rock Elite is going to be very good. I was play, I would play as many as I get past of this guy. Absolutely. Or as many as I get in a in a sealed deck. Absolutely. Of Talk Rock Elite. Those who serve. Two generic mana and a white for a 2-4. Yeah, as a common creature zombie. Uh, these guys are fine. You, when you're playing the Dirtle White deck, this is the card you want. It blocks three threes all day. Um, they're going to need to either probably pump something or move it. You know, this is going to be your, your solid blocker for three mana. Um, on turn three, this is going to block, block most stuff and live. So I like a copy of those who serve. Maybe two if you're playing a really, really dirtily, dirtily white deck. But uh, and also it's a zombie, so it can set off your other zombie synergies if you're reaching for those zombies. It's not going to be like first pick or anything crazy. But in a draft when... You know, a person or two starts setting into that zombie strategy. This guy is, that's when this guy will go. Uh, time to reflect. Speaking of zombie strategies, um, the white, one white mana for a uncommon instant says exile target creature that blocked or was blocked by a zombie this turn. So if this zombie deck, uh, obviously, if you're not playing zombies, don't play this card because it does nothing. It's a stone nothing if you're not playing zombies. Um, if you're playing a lot of zombies, like I would say two-thirds of your deck are zombies, throw in one of these, maybe two of these even, um, because you block, before damage happens, exile. That's all it does. It's not exile and then return, it's just dead. You're just like, he's not coming back out of that coffin there. <laughs> um, so, when I think this card could see play in standard, um, I, there's, okay, so just imagine this world. So time to so somebody attacks into your border zombies or you attack with a bunch of zombies into their board. They block with something real big. Maybe even indestructible. They block with a god. You get to exile it. Because their gods are indestructible. This is what they're dying to, right? They died to the exile. That's it. Um, okay. You something left the battlefield now. You know what that sets off? Fatal push. Generic mana kills something else. Or sorry, a black mana kills something else. Um, <laughs> that's just such a big swing for two mana. And that's the colors that the zombie deck will be black, white, maybe throw in a third color, depending if people want to get a little more aggressive with red, maybe, or a little more controlly with blue. But black, white are definitely going to be in there. And if that becomes a standard, I think it will have to get some more support, possibly from Shadows, um, to see play, for sure. But if it does, this is going to be in there, for sure. This is the removal that that deck wants. Playing Fatal Push, playing Four Time to Reflect, for sure, for sure. Ugh really good card again this should be obvious if you're newer to magic you have to have zombies in your deck to play this card if you're playing a white deck that's mostly like warriors or oketra and some cats and stuff and you have one or two zombies in your deck don't play this card this card will not do anything in your hand if you don't have zombies just remember that trial of solidarity your first trial is two generic mana and a white uh, for a uncommon enchantment, it says when Trial of Solidarity enters the battlefield, creatures you control get plus two, plus one, and gain vigilance until the end of your turn. When a cartouche, now this is on all the trials, when a cartouche, any cartouche, it can be any color, enters the battlefield under your control, return Trial of Solidarity to its owner's hand. You still get the two plus two, plus one effect, 
So the magical Christmas land with all the trials and cartouches are you play trial, play a cartouche, play the trial again. I get multiple effects off of your trial. All the trials have really good enter the battlefield abilities, but that's it. Uh, which on enchantments you usually want a constant, but the thing is, that's the idea with the cartouches and the trials, you blink the trials and play them multiple times in a turn or you know multiple times in a game and get that effect over again. Plus two plus one in vigilance is no joke. Um, it pumps the toughness of your creatures, so hopefully more of them live. It plumps the plumps it pumps the power of your creatures, so you're gonna kill more of your opponent's stuff as well. And everything that lives on your side of the board is gonna be survived to block. Right? And hopefully you're doing at least two more damage to your opponent with this guy, maybe four, maybe six, depending on how wide around them you've gone. Uh, this is the kind of card you want to play in your token white decks. Um, even cards like our 3-5, it pumps into a 5-6 with Vigilance. I'm going to swing in with that pretty confidently, right? So Trial Solidarity, Solidarity, really like it. I would play it. It's even splashable for one white mana. So, uh, True Heart Duelist is generic and a white for a uncommon creature, it's a human warrior, it's a 2-2. A true heart duelist can block an additional creature each combat and it embalms for two generic mana and a white. Um, I love this, maybe not so much in our aggressive decks because it's just a 2-2 two -two for two, no first strike, no 3-2 or anything like that crazy. But it blocks two things, and then it comes back and blocks two more things. Uh, not on the same turn, obviously, but it buys you a couple of turns for five mana. Um, and maybe even, you know, trades with their 3-2 or X-1, you know. Um, so or you can trade with two X1s, right? It can block two 1-1 one, one warrior creatures and kill them both, and two for one, and then come back. Blah. Flashback on your creatures is a good thing, people. True Heart Duelist, I'd, play, I'd gladly play a couple of them. Maybe not so much in your aggressive white decks, but in your dirty white decks like I want to play, um, for sure. Unwavering Initiate is a two generic mana and white for a common human warrior. It's a 3-2 with Vigilance that embalms for four generic and a white mana. Um, I've played two threes... Or sorry, three twos for uh, three with Vigilance four. They've done fine. Um, sometimes you'll get lucky and they'll hit for a couple. The only thing is this guy can be killed by two drops, right? And as we'll see, sometimes even one drops. Um, so in the right cases can be good. Uh, I can see a case, you know, where this is one of your late creatures, like 15th to 17th creature. Um, well, there, again, the Embalm and the fact that it's a zombie can bring it back, can make it higher value if that's what your deck's about, though. So... Um, I would put this, you know, kind of middling to late pick uh, for a draft or, you know, depending on what your archetype is. Or, you know, kind of your one of your last few creatures that you're going to include in your sealed deck. Uh, Vizier of Deferment is too generic and a white for a 2-2. Two -two. It's an uncommon human cleric. It has flash and says whenever, uh, when Vizier of De Deferment <laughs> enters the battlefield, you may exile target creature if it attacked or blocked this turn. Return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Um, this does a few things. If you're not as familiar with this kind of effect, it can do things like um, uh, you can attack, exert, maybe they didn't block, and it gives that thing pseudo-vigilance. So you can blink it, it comes back untapped. So it gets rid of that exert having to stay tapped thing. Uh, you can use it on defense as well. So you block, you know, something of theirs that's gigantic with something you like, but, you know, it's not, it's more than one one. It's something you want to keep alive, right? Uh, you can blink that again, comes back. Now, do not blink your embalm tokens. They are tokens and will die. Do not do that. Uh, it's not like they come back as their original creature or anything stupidly broken like that. So, um, but Vizier Deferment is good. I would definitely play it um, in your exert decks. It lets you reset and exert again. So your aggressive decks, it's solid. Um... Worst comes to worst, it's a flash blocker, right? Um, also, you can play it on defense, so I like this in your white decks. It's an uncommon, so you probably won't see too many, but I would definitely be glad playing a copy. Uh, Vizier of Remedies is generic mana and a white for an uncommon human cleric. It says if one or more minus one, minus one counters would be put on a creature you control, that many minus one, minus one counters, minus one, uh, are put on instead. So somebody wants to distribute uh, three minus one, minus one counters to a creature, they only get to put two on it. Um... There's a black removal spell that lets you distribute minus two minus one minus one counters to one or more creatures. So if they do that to two different creatures, neither of them get that minus one minus one counter. Because it says it gets that many, however many they put on it, minus one. So if they were only going to put one on it, one minus one, zero, right? Uh, so really negates a lot of that minus one minus one counters that strategies that are going to be happening. Um, it's, oh, it's it's a little weaker because of that. Uh, like, it's a 2-1 for 2. It's not even a 2-2 two, two for 2. Uh, so, like, this creature probably isn't going to be, atta be attacking anytime soon. 
worst comes to worst, though, I see this card as, you know, you're playing against that black-green deck that wants to remove things. They're going to have to remove this instead of putting minus one, minus one counters on the creatures they actually want to put them on. So if nothing else, as that kind of beacon for counters, I'm going to play a copy of this probably. Uh, Winged Shepherd is our last white card. Uh, Winged Shepherd is a five generic mana and white for a common creature. Angel it is a 3-3, three, three, flying, vigilance, and cycling for a white. Um, now, this is a probably a mana more uh, than I want to pay for my 3-3 three, three flying vigilance. Um, I think it's a mana more than we've paid in the past as well. I think we've gotten this for five before. Thing is, those cards didn't have cycling. Um, so because of that, this I kind of put this in the same light um, as the Unwavering Initiate. You know, I'm gonna. It's gonna probably gonna be one of the last creatures. There are better six drops out there than this. Um, like if I had a choice between this and our seven drop that was indestructible, Seraph, I would play that instead, even though it's one more mana, because indestructible to me will stick around a lot longer. Right? This dies to impeccable timing. This dies. It dies to removal. I know, not a good argument always, but. Uh, this just is less powerful than that even though it cycles like if I'm to the point where I have to cycle this that probably means one of two things I either again I'm not doing well or I'm doing so well that I'm probably already winning and gonna do fine so Winged Shepherd again is probably gonna be for me anyway one of my last few creatures to make the cut in a seal deck or probably a, a later pick earlier if you're doing like a blue white flyers theme but again I would rather top off my curve with other things in Winged Shepherd all right um that being said, that Wing Shepherd was our last card for our white uh, Amonkhet cards. So I would love to hear from you guys. What did you think about the white cards? Uh, did you agree with me? Did you disagree with me? Please comment down below to let me know. Um, are you excited for playing, for drafting this? For I'm filming this for the pre-release. Are you excited for your pre-release? What happened at your pre-release? Let me know how these cards did for you. Uh, you can follow me. Uh, down at twitch.tv slash dave865 or at dave2619 on Twitter. Uh, please, if you like the channel, uh, like, share, subscribe, comment. Let other people know that I exist, that Gas City Gaming is trying to get going here for, for the magic community in Medicine Hat and just in general as well. The more attention we get to the game, the more love we get to the game, the better it is. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, I had fun. I hope you have fun with these cards. I plan to. Uh, have an awesome day and have a fun pre-release.